Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. And we want to thank our newest patron. Oh, thank you so much. Corey Girl is our newest Patreon. We appreciate your support. Absolutely. Thank you so much for supporting us over at Patreon. Again, exclusive videos go up there every week, Patreon only. And uh, we got some interesting stuff here. Interesting stuff. Do you know who Linda Sun is? Well, this is Kate, Kathy Hoschel, the New York governor's. Chinese spy. <laughs> As we said, you know, there's there's obviously one system up in play here that is delivering us all the scripts that we watch unfold. And, you know, every time I see somebody say, well, let us look what scripture has to say. I just think they don't understand what they're saying. They're 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 putting out their script. Sure. This is part of the script. This is part of that WW3 conflict that, that's been brewing for quite a while and building and bubbling up. This is an Ivy League graduate who infiltrated government to pump taxpayer funds into the plague upon the land crisis. So, you know, you have to ask yourself, why? She, she is the owner of a $4 million home over here in Manhasset, New York which was raided by the FBI Tuesday morning. Hmm, interesting, is it not? You know, again, everything is kind of being exposed. Obviously, uh, when you look at New York and the New York governor's response to the plague upon the land, uh, you know, again, it, it's very, very much a complete lockdown scenario, as we've seen those states and cities leaning towards the left, um, boy, it, it felt so different going through those uh, as we crossed the country during the plague upon the land. And, uh, you know, one place to another, it, it really, really varied um, when we were in some locations, literally. And you guys probably have seen it, too. One person in a store as one person left and that's it. They had they, they were counting heads in certain stores, you know. And so what we find is that, you know, here you go, as the story emerges, uh, last night it emerged that a senior New York government official was allegedly working as a Chinese spy while pumping taxpayer funds into masks and respirators during the plague upon the land. Linda Soon, an Ivy League graduate who worked for Democratic Governors Andrew Cuomo and then Kathy Hochul, was dramatically arrested along with her husband in a dawn raid on their $4 million Long Island mansion on Tuesday. And her and her husband, Christopher Hu, are accused of earning millions in bribes from the Chinese Communist Party, helping fund the lavish lifestyle that included a $2 million Hawaii condo, and a 2024 Ferrari. It's now emerged that she had boasted of having spearheaded the New York government purchase of personal protective equipment, PPE. Ah, very familiar with PPE, as I had worked for a company that, that actually was in that line of business. And ventilators during the, the Plague Upon the Land pandemic. Uh, now, you know, according to the LinkedIn profile, uh, this information was there. It's now deleted. You know, LinkedIn is a scam. I'll tell you, uh, you cannot even easily uh, delete your profile. You really can't. And, you know, you, you, I, this has been something that I've experienced directly. You know, it's it's like hard to get yourself deleted when you tell it, no, I don't want any more um, notifications. It still gives you notifications. You know, I'm still receiving um, the stuff for for jobs that I have absolutely no interest in, would never ever do again um, under any circumstance. And yet, you know, this is part of that tying us always together. And you can't untie yourself with these um, with these things. And as we know, we're, we're heading towards digital ID. They're, they're still doing everything they're doing. They haven't slowed down. Even though people are awakening in droves, they're still moving straight forward, even though things like this are getting uncovered. Because, you know, this is exactly 
who the Illuminati contact. Uh, has nothing to do with her ethnicity. No, it's the fact that she can be bought with Ferraris and mansions. That That's more important to her than just simply doing something that's that's r truly right and noble. As we, we know, uh, what what has emerged shows, you know, the effect of uh, some of these substances on, on how well we're doing, uh, breathing. <laughs> so here you go, laundering millions of dollars, you know, it, it's just disgusting. It's totally disgusting. But this is exactly who the system is looking for. This is exactly the person that the system wants to encounter because they can simply count on them by putting them on the payroll. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly the type of person that the vast majority of politicians across the planet are in the sad reality. They're, they're people that desire that elite status. They, they desire the luxury. They desire all the bells and whistles and, and everything that fluffs the ego up. You know, it's, it's sad and unfortunate. I think I don't think it's, there's anything wrong with having nice things. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a nice house, a nice car. Um, of right. Of at, well, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But how did you get it? You know, right. that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, how did you get it? And then I don't understand people when they do receive something like this at the expense of so many. How do you live in there? You know, how do you look in the mirror every day? How do you how do you even enjoy it? No, I don't understand that mentality. So I, I do see them as something totally separate from humanity and somebody completely taken over by a, a jinn or uh, something of a, a reptilian type of species because they're completely puppeted. We just did that video the other day about um, puppets and there was a, a puppeteer and he was over a, working a puppy and the other dog, the real dog, didn't think anything of it. He just thought he was playing with a friend. And we have to realize that so many of these people are being puppeteered by a different force, a, a different energy. Yeah, absolutely. As you know, you look at the smirk on this person's face right here, and, and that's the type of smirk that says everything. Um, you know, this is again, this is exactly the type of people that get into politics. Um, in the first place to just simply, you know, push themselves forward in, in everything that is about ego. Um, and, you know, here you go. Look at being honored at the People's Republic of China consulate event image. Now, there's, there's an awful lot of these connections that are being brought out into the light now because they're, they're ready for the next level. They're, they're, you know, paving the way for that conflict to come. And yet, as long as people will man the guns uh, and enforce the rules given to them by people like this, you know, then we'll still have the same power structure on the planet. It's when people start to realize uh, that they're all part of something much, much bigger and, you know, we, we don't put them on a pedestal and we, we don't have uh, a society uh, that is all centered on ego, which is what this is. You know, this is, again, being centered on the self and ego to the extreme where and, and this is what they sell in, in Hollywood. This is what's sold to us, uh, whether you're looking at it from. Uh, capitalism point of view or uh, I think it's hilarious when you look at the very definition of communism uh, there is no communism on the planet not in the sense of people living in a communal way the, you know the closest thing to communism on the planet is like some tribes in the Amazon where they just simply share whatever fish they catch and and you know share um, you know, relatively equally or proportionate to what people contribute to their little micro societies. Communism and capitalism are created by the same entities. And so, you know, they're created in a way in which um, they're pointed against each other. In many ways, it's, it's no different than Islam 
and Christianity being on a collision course, useful tools to pit against each other. But there's always this elite class. There's always this class that rules, uh, whether they're kings and queens or they're prime ministers and senators, etc. You know, this this is just an opportunity for those that are easily swayed um, by flashy things and and lifestyle and ego notoriety to be utilized as tools by the control system. And we were talking about the Venezuelan gang situation. Um, you know, it, it, it's interesting because, you know, we'll have people that say, oh, you're, you're, you're giving uh, the clickbait titles or what have you. Well, it, in the titles, you have to kind of be vague because, number one, if they don't um, like your channel <laughs> and, and you go and you put out there what you're, what you're talking about completely, they'll bury it and nobody will ever see it. Uh, in the algorithms because this is what the algorithms do now if they like your channel because you're promoting an aspect of the control system like if you're promoting um, one uh, one religion or you know like say you know if you're promoting traditional Christianity or if you're promoting you know Islam even um, or if you're promoting one side or the other of, of the political spectrum that's good because it's all about division and conflict and controlling through conflict. Uh, if you're trying to say, you know, take a step back and look at the bigger picture, uh, you know, again, they can't have that. But, you know, there's no way we couldn't just tell it like it is because that's just who we are. So, you know, that's that's a choice that we make and, and we're happy to stick to it and we're happy to. Um, not show our faces, you know, because we don't need our faces out there um, on billboards. We, we don't desire the notoriety. Uh, in some ways, I think the anonymous aspect of how we've been doing it is wonderful because we're just delivering the news with no ego involved. And at the same time, you know, trying to give a spiritual um, message to this because Again, as long as we keep repeating history that we don't really understand the finer points of, uh, we're never going to uh, alleviate the darkness on the planet. And here we see four linked to the Venezuelan gang arrest, uh, arrested at Arapaho County apartment. Pe four people with ties to the Venezuelan gang, Tren de Aragua, were arrested at an apartment complex, South Quebec Street, late August, according to Arapaho Sheriff's Office. Uh, so you see uh, proactive policing on August 21st. Deputies arrested six people, Ivy Crossing Apartments near South Quebec Street and Highline Smith Way on a variety of charges ranging from drugs to stolen vehicles. You know, there's a lot more that's going to be coming with this. Um, well, you know, interesting, you know, officers are looking for things like stolen vehicles and persons wanted by other jurisdictions. The proactive operation took place in an area of the county where there had been two cases in the past five years of officers shooting and killing suspects in addition to a SWAT situation. On August 21st, officers seized 750 counterfeit pills, some ketamine, and a stolen car. Um, you know, again, we, we like natural ways and, and we don't like anything that's constructed in a, um, in a lab because I wouldn't trust anything that's constructed in a lab with, you know, all that Mork from Orc stuff going on and, and just the revelations of so many things that we've been doing for so long, uh, that we didn't have a clue we're building up in our bodies in a negative way uh i have another uh little little video i'm going to share with you guys later about a guy talking about things that are totally uh not connected uh but you know some people might make their own connections so with this situation ongoing as it's a big big topic right now this is from zero hedge Armed Venezuelan prison gang in Denver highlights a map of U.S. sanctuary zones to avoid a mid-migrant crisis. Um, so we, we know that there's going to be a, a major, major push at some time 
with probably outright battles for certain areas between cartels and these armed gangs and also sleeper cells within the U.S. Where are these places? Well, that's that's really, uh, again, uh, a good question. Uh, every safe zone is going to have its issues. Uh, this is actually a map provided um, you know, by, our, by the government themselves showing uh, different facilities here, sanctuary cities and counties that have laws that make it impossible to really um, deal with these, you know, like catch and release. This is all they do. This is what the cops in New York were saying, part of a regional jail state facility. And so when you look at all these boxes, these are areas that are going to be uh, problematic areas. And, you know, one, one area that we did like a lot was New Mexico, but the thing we didn't like was the governor and the response to the lockdown. It felt so much like Nazi Germany. And that's why we jumped over and, and went into Texas. Uh, we weren't anticipating, uh, truly. I had always done research and, and had always had backups to backups um, in mind uh, for different places to, to ride these different storms out. Um, <clears throat> and from some aspects, you know, New Mexico was one of the best places, but not with uh, a governor in place that f is basically the same as the governor of New York when you get down to it. And when you see this, you know, there's, there's like 2 million people at most legally living in New Mexico. How many illegally? I don't know. Um, but again, it's, it's one of the least populous uh, states as far as population density. Um, as I believe it's like the fifth largest state size-wise. So it, it makes it um, attractive for a place to try to write out crazy times. But when you're going to have so many people being brought here and dumped off or, you know, that, that can stay here and, you know, they could commit crimes and get released without any sort of liability coming back at them and they're not going to get booted out. That makes it a very dangerous area. Um, Nebraska as well. Look at Nebraska. It's all covered. Minnesota is all covered as we see Michigan, uh, Illinois. But look at Virginia. Holy cow. I can't even see Virginia. It's so covered. And, of course, the Northeast as well. So you can see there are some zones where you, you don't have a lot of this. Now, we do know... Um, whether or not it is one of these uh, sanctuary cities, um, there's going to be issues in uh, at pretty much everywhere. Obviously, the border area, even though Texas doesn't have it, it Texas is flooded with uh, illegal migrants. And same thing also with Florida. So, you know, again, it's just listening to the higher self and getting guidance that way on where you're supposed to be in these times. Yeah, this is really messy because they're they're going to get a quick understanding that they can do whatever they want and there is not going to be any consequences. After a while, they'll be calling in the National Guard to try to help, to try to quell what's happening. And after a while, that's not going to be enough either. So, I mean, I can just see this growing. This is like, this is like a grassroots thing to cause chaos that the control system... Both sides have put in place, you know, when one side might speak against it, but they remain completely mute when it comes to actually doing anything about it. And, you know, the, the other side is just, you know, they're boisterous about it. Well, you know, we, we want to do this thing. And I mean, it's a mess. There is not one politician that has not assisted in helping to create this mess because they all know as long as they just play their part right off their cue card they're you know they're going to get what whatever they want you know they'll get their palaces they'll get their nice cars they'll get their 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 cush pay um all they have to do is go along so uh, in and some of them they're scripted to say a lot and other ones are scripted to well say a lot but do nothing and it just goes on and on and on and and kind of leaves us in a position where we have to take care of ourselves. It's that self-responsibility that needs to kick in so that we can find ways uh, where we can get what we need uh, without the system. And, you know, it's 
it's growing. It's growing. It's like a fire. You know, it's a kind. It was a kindling at first start, and pretty soon these people, they're going to become more and more emboldened, and, and that's what I see, and that's where the problems are really going to be uh, setting in. Absolutely, and you know, Malay, this is again uh, somebody that the energy uh, feels very psychopathic. You know, this is that's that's the word, the first word that comes to my mind, and I think Cindy's in agreement. When we feel this person, he's he's a psychopath. Yeah. Oh, he's totally detached. There's something really wrong with this guy. I mean, he's not controlled by just one gin. No, he has several. They really like his his ability to the jinn do they like his ability how how he feeds them and they also like how they can he, he's almost uh the jinn find him entertaining and it's really really disturbing this energy that this guy carries i mean uh, oh gosh i i can't them, quite pinpoint you're it talking jinn, give them a little picture of the oh gosh there are these horrible entities that are not in this dimension they're in another dimension they feed off of humans they feed off of fear they feed off of anger uh they're the second level when we look at our 3d world and our government uh whenever you see the government doing anything you know to cause distress or cause people to be in pain and fear and angst and anxiety they're feeding their jinn because the jinn can go around and get people to do things. People can he hear the jinn. They absolutely hear the jinn. They're just not aware of it. So, you know, if you have these yucky thoughts going on in your head and you don't know where they're coming from and it's just not like you, this could very well be a jinn. And the jinn love this guy because he's so reactive to them. Yes, and we've actually shown a picture that we took of a jinn and have shared that um, on videos on E Arts, and I think it's also on Evolutionary um, as well. And it would be a you know some sometimes I'm tempted to re up the videos we've done in the past for those that haven't seen them um, because you know again we speak from self uh, observation in, in so many cases i mean we've seen and gotten photographs of drones um, of all sorts extraterrestrial origin as well um, and we've had a lot of direct encounters uh, because it's just you know part of the nature of ourselves um, because we're, we're aware of what's going on to such a high degree so here he has uh, began shipping out part of Argentina's supply of 2 million troy ounces of gold valued at 4.5 billion to Rothschild & Co., basically. The pi private banking group uh, in London is is where people believe. Now, this, this article is talking about it and saying it's a mystery. They don't know exactly where it's gone. It's speculated it's gone to, to London. And when you realize that uh, London is Rome, and, and Rome in so many ways is also Jerusalem in another way, this is all part of, of the program that's been underway for thousands of years. Um, and really what we see with that system is, is really the draconian system at play, the, the draconian way of doing things. Um, and you, again, the Abrahamic traditions, in our point of view, they are the draconian systems. And so here you go. I mean, this is no different than when we had uh, the different explorers going around the world. And it's just horrible, the stuff that they do. I mean, have done and still do. And, you know, yet, as, as we said so many times, you know, kids will, would have played cowboys and Indians back in the day. And the cowboys would be the good guys and the Indians would be the bad guys because that's what we're taught, uh, so to speak. Um, and the reality is, again, this is colonialism. This is conquering and enslaving and this is stealing and this is all he's doing because his energy is the same as, as that Chinese lady's energy. Um, and yet w there were many other humans or humanoid beings Again, uh, the human form is, is a very, very common form. And there's all types of humanoid beings throughout um, our galaxy and universe. These skulls were on display for a very long time. This is in Peru. And it's interesting, again, to note that when you look at the DNA haplogroups, um, you'll find there's a connection between Peru 
and the Black Sea area, which again includes Ukraine, where the war is ongoing, Turkey, and those other nations around there. And so um, this gentleman here was shocked to see when he went into the museum that featured um, this skull and many others that it was shut down as they're trying to hide these things. There's been so much made up of, you know, the little um, <laughs> very small alien bodies and, you know, what, what was the fact? I mean, were these things just puppets or, you know, ch child's play things, little dollies or, or real beings? No, there's been so many different real beings on this planet, uh, you know, many different humanoid beings, all sorts of types. Again, some people will look to the Bible and they'll say all giants uh, have a taste for a certain thing that they shouldn't have a taste for. And, you know, this is why they were all destroyed by God. And it's like you could not be more sound asleep. Plain and simple, there are so many different forms of giants that were here, as well as tiny little beings uh beings so tiny that it would blow your mind uh, you know our what what they've given us in our history is is so revisionist again I, I love john levy and his work you know i could watch him all the time binge watch him and it's because you know he's uncovering things out there he's careful very very careful not to to give you um, some information that, you know, is, is really what he's thinking, but he lets you know what he's thinking, if you know what I mean. Humankind has not woven uh, the web of life. We are but one thread within it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. All things are bound together. All things connect. Chief Seattle um, again, this is, these are wise words, very wise words from indigenous people that were here in in north america and and also in south america too um, that were wiped out by the colonialism and yet there's layer upon layer of of different beings that were wiped out um, by the next one that came this is one of the books that's on my uh, bed stand right now um, about a third of the way through it path of souls by dr gregory little um, good, good work. Uh, he's very interesting. I'll give you guys a link. Um, this is an hour and 13 minutes. It's Megalithmania out of the UK, uh, and it's an interview with Dr. Little. Um, he, he has focused a lot on, on North America, specifically a, a lot um, on the Mississippian culture and the Mound culture. And, you know, those of us that that live in uh, the United States, especially if you're really kind of through the central part and over to the southeast and up to Ohio, you know, we're walking on on paths of, of giants here and not just giants, but all sorts of different beings that knew how to live in, in much greater harmony with the planet than we do now. In fact, you know, the way we live now would, I'm sure, nauseate um, those that have gone before us that understand that inter interwoven web of life. Well, they, they understand the interwoven web and they understand their importance or uh, unimportance, for that matter, on this earth. If we uh, look at the insects and if we were to take away the insects on the planet, the planet could not survive. If we took away the leafy green things, the planet could not survive. If we took away the animals, the planet could not survive. But are we being good stewards here? What if we were taken off planet? What if we were taken away from the planet? Would the planet thrive or would it, would it not survive? You know, we, we need to look at what we're doing and make sure we're adding to everything that we do in this world. We have the right in our own lives to look at what we are doing and what affects us. And if that thing that we are doing if it is adding to our lives, adding benefit to our lives, this is good. This is where we should be at, you know, including other people. But if they are not adding benefit to our lives, then we have the right to dismiss that. And I think we need to look at what we're doing on earth, what we're doing to the land, what we're doing to others, and just make sure whatever you touch, whatever you do, 
try to make that thing a little bit better before you return it back out into the world because I think that's the natural way of things. This is what insects do. This is what plants do. This is what animals do. They're they're in sync. They're symbiotic. And, and we should try to do that to the best of our ability to be good stewards of the planet. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because it does break my heart when I'm looking at the historical records that we have and, and you know, seeing how these... Uh, the people that were here, and yes, there were tribes that were, that were at war with each other, um, but the way that the uh, European, you know, truly, they, they were just, it's the same system. The way that they acted uh, was very much um, just atrocious and horrible, and yet these people are put up on pedestals. You know, again, Columbus and Columbus Day, 1492, well, you know, again, the Vikings, those we know as Vikings were here 500 years earlier, um, but still there was uh, interaction going on be between people that were really able to go all around the world in many cases and interact that they've totally washed away and hidden, and yet they've wiped out so many people that were truly uh, living in a very, very harmonious way with nature itself and, and purposely not uh, looking to advance in certain ways because those advancements would, would literally be uh, going backwards in so many ways. Um, you know, again, some of our technology may appear to take us forward, but in reality, it, it's, 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 it's doing just the opposite. It's hindering the spiritual growth. So, you know, hundreds of millions of people were wiped out in this. This was, this was the, the biggest genocide, really, that we know of. And it dwarfs what happened in the 40s uh, by, by a mile. And yet, when we see things like Yoda and the Force and Star Wars, even Yoda was, was stolen from these um, stories that come to us from hundreds of years ago was yoda a medieval monk who was this 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 is in the um, british library here it's a pre-1600 sure looks like yoda to me i mean obviously you know again when you look at hollywood when you look at you know all those that are part of the system they trigger us and they trigger our collective minds with things that are in our DNA memory. And we can relate to this and we perhaps relate to Yoda because the reality is there was a Yoda. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the hands on this picture too and they look kind of fin-like. They look <laughs> kind of fish-like and we have a very special family member out there who has given us a Yoda and our Yoda sits proudly on our computer and we appreciate our Yoda. I, I think it's a very special energy. I think it's an energy that we can all really tap into in some way, shape or form. How to make your own antibiotics naturally. There's so many things out there, you guys. Oregano oil uh, for skin and sinus infections, gut health, candida, foot nail fungus and immune system boost, black seed oil, uh, kills antibiotic resistant superbugs and immune system boost. Cinnamon for fungal infections, candida, athlete's foot. Uh, turmeric. Turmeric is a big one in this house. Kills antibiotic resistant superbugs and immune system boost. Garlic. Gar I, th I think garlic's my favorite. Garlic's probably my go-to for colds, flu, ear infections. Um, manuka honey is a good one. Now, I'm not familiar. I have never used manuka honey, but I hear great things about it. You put it on a, a wound, you put it on a sore, you, you put it wherever, and it's going to work its magic, much like colloidal silver uh, throughout uh, echinacea, uh, throughout the later parts of the 19th century and the first 30 years. The 20th century, echinacea was the preferred treatment for infections. And uh, eusinia, relief for sinus infections, bronchial issues, skin fungus. I'm, I'm not familiar with the eusinia at all. I'm not familiar with that one. But the other ones I love, and the only other one I don't see here is aloe vera is also another antibiotic. You can just get the leaf. You get the leaf at the store and you fillet it and you want to take the inside of the leaf, it, the meat inside of the leaf, and get that down because it kills all kinds of crazy stuff and it really fights inflammation and it was a lifesaver for me. 
tastes awful, but you know what? When you're in that much pain, it, <laughs> you just you just get it in your system because it's going to help. A lot of things out there we can do to really avoid the uh, prescription other things, but uh, we're not here to give medical advice. You know, we're not here to advise, just here to tell you what we have done and what's worked in this house. Yeah, nothing in nature is random. A thing seems random only because of the incompleteness of our knowledge. Reality is self-similar. Self-similar structures appear at all levels in nature following the same mathematical and geometrical patterns. The patterns are universal formulas based on the dynamics of electromagnetism. Fractal science reveals the universal matrix of forms that's evidence in all of nature. Absolutely. You know, this is that was the first thing I ever talked about was the fractal nature of the universe uh, in the very first videos that I ever did way back in 2017. And in fact, that was going to be uh, a big part of all I was going to talk about was really just this is why it's evolutionary energy art. Uh, it, it was going to be all about uh, Qigong and yoga and um uh, and, and just how the universe functions and our intent and the power of thought. Again, whether you want to call something prayer or, in, in, you know, or magic or, or, you know, working your magic and working your prayers, you know, the, the, those words right there can be so divisive depending on, on the, the dogma that's been put into the mind. And you'll have people say, you know, if they've been brought up in a very dogmatic way, oh my gosh, magic, wah, you know, uh, and they'll think that there's something wrong with that and something very, very evil with that. But again, you know, magic is, is getting reality to conform to your intent. It doesn't have to be bad. You know, we can work our magic for peace around the world by helping illuminate other minds to the fact that they've been programmed in what they perceive as a way uh, that's that's right and yet that programming has made it so they have an inability to see uh, that they're viewing the world in a divisive manner in which they'll, they'll never be able to understand that bigger picture, that interwoven web that is a part of everything. So, you know, what it is, is we're here in this deep duality. And yes, absolutely, this particular realm is very, very dualistic in nature. It's recognizing that, understanding that it's there as a teaching tool. And then, you know, what are you going to do about it? Well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to push uh, for that for that path that leads back to the oneness and and that's the road that i want to take mm -hmm. that's right you know whether it be spells or whether it be prayers so we can all agree that there is that thing out there that we all have access to and we can utilize it however we choose we utilize it to bring about healing we utilize it to bring about peace we utilize it to bring about healing on the planet you know that's our choice that's our choice it's our responsibility it's our karma what we put out there we get back and you know it just feels good to know when you are putting out the right thing when you're doing the right thing when you're creating and causing healing and i gotta tell you guys there's um something about healing when you work on children and animals they're amazing because they don't have the blocks in place that you have to struggle to uh, get them to receive the healing. When you're working on your children or your pets, they simply receive because they believe in, in the love. They believe in the oneness. They, they have not been tainted. So it's just a beautiful thing. If you work on your children, you work on your pets, I, I encourage that um, as a, a way of practicing healing and different modalities of energy work. You know, you could look at these puppies and see the love that's there and recognize, too, that there are beings that are just incredibly loving, every bit as loving as, as these puppies. And, yeah, we could equate these puppies to angels. But there are, you know, non-physical beings that are watching you all the time. 
and, and and they're encouraging you and they're they're trying to guide you this is why we should cultivate the spiritual side and and do a mind body breath practice so we could actually hear them the system doesn't want you hearing them the system wants you only hearing the system the system wants you concerned with the things that the system is concerned with which are all pretty much materialistic when you get down to it uh, and also just the fact that they utilize humans as, as a energy source. Cultivate that stillness, that mind, body, breath practice. That is the key to connecting that web that connects us to those that love us unconditionally on the other side. And again, it could be uh, loved ones that have passed on. It could be loved ones that are not incarnating at this time and have simply decided they're going to help you from the other side and coach from the other side as best as they can. Now, the system doesn't want you hearing them, so it's going to do all it can to, to keep you from hearing them. But you can hear them if you really do try and dedicate the time to a mind-body-breath practice like yoga, qigong, meditation. Love is that one source. It's that one. It's love is it's it's tangible. It's tangible. It's that force that drives us, that force that guides us, that force that we should all be calling in and putting out onto the planet. Absolutely. Again, thank you guys so much for your support. We couldn't do it without you. And we look forward to your comments and observations. Please do share your experiences and stories with each other so we may all grow from them. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.